Joining us now is the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, the man in the middle of all of this, Congressman James Comer from the great state of Kentucky. Welcome, Chairman. All right, tell our viewers why the formal inquiry vote was necessary. You were already investigating why the formal inquiry vote. Well, we had to move to the next level, Trey, as you know, because this administration was obstructing us. We had witnesses that we wanted to call to ask basic questions, and the White House instructed them not to go. We requested emails, uh, correspondence that Joe Biden used on a government email in a pseudonym with uh, many of these shady characters that are involved in this influence peddling scheme. Remember, Joe Biden said he never talked to most of these guys in January when he launched the investigation. Now we know that he was communicating secretly on a government email in a, using a pseudonym back and forth with the architect, uh, Eric Sherwin, of, of all of the shell companies. And we know this because these were released in the indictment in California of the president's son. So we've accumulated tons of evidence of potential wrongdoing with Joe Biden. We've uncovered numerous crimes from both the president's son and the president's brother. They were obviously influence peddling. I don't think anyone in America would disagree with that. And they were influence peddling and selling Joe Biden's brand. We know that from Devin Archer's testimony. So we had to go to the next step, impeachment inquiry, as you said in your monologue, to, to put us in a stronger position to win in court, because we're going to end up in court if the uh, administration continues to stonewall and obstruct our investigation. You know, Chairman, when I had the pleasure of working with you and I would come home to South Carolina on the weekends, people would stop me and say, how in the world can you work with X? And they would always name a Democrat that they'd seen on the news that they didn't like. And my answer was always the same. I, my expectations were never high of working with Democrats. It was the D.C. media that disappointed me the most. The biggest surprise was the headwind that the D.C. media created for every Republican investigation. And I have seen some interviews with you lately, and I, it seems like, I'm not saying you're frustrated, but it seems like you are running into a headwind also as it relates to the D.C. media and their lack of curiosity about this case. I told the D.C. media a week ago, I said, you all had an opportunity to be the next Woodward or Bernstein, but you've squandered that. I mean, the poll after poll shows an overwhelming majority of Americans agree that something's wrong here with Joe Biden. Seventy percent believe that he did something either illegal or unethical with his family. Uh, that's a pretty good percentage of Americans that are curious about this investigation. The, the Americans want the truth. They want to know, did this president sell access to our enemies around the world, because it sure does appear that they did. I mean, we've already traced $24 million from bad people in bad countries that went into, into various fake companies, what I've been calling shell companies, of the Bidens, and they can't say what they did to receive the money. That should alarm every American. I went on Meet the Press last week, and I've watched Meet the Press my entire life. I've never seen a host attack me you know, attack me for having the audacity to investigate. And then you look at what the Washington Post wrote and the New York Times after we voted unanimously to proceed with the impeachment inquiry. They said Republicans vote for impeachment inquiry despite no evidence of wrongdoing of Joe Biden. I mean, we've already produced five direct payments to Joe Biden where we traced the funds tra tray directly to influence peddling schemes. There's no question Joe Biden received at least five payments that were derived from his family's influence peddling scheme. Now, he deserves due process, as you know, but the facts remain that this family has, been, has had the reputation for a long time of being for sale. We know the president's family's in trouble because the son continues to get indicted in multiple courts. And we have serious questions about our national security. So that's why we're doing this investigation. I think the American people are behind us 100%. But the media continues to attack me. They're here in my little town as we speak in, in Kentucky trying to dig up stuff. They're trying to say, I have a shell company. My LLC has a lot of assets. A shell company, by definition, has no assets or, or no purpose. But, I mean, they continue to just make stuff up. Not only are they attacking me, Trey, they're making stuff up 
to try to discredit me as an investigator. Well, it's nice to hear, I guess, on the one hand, that the media is at least consistent. They haven't changed from when I was there. Let me ask you one <laughs> final question. All right, so here's the age-old dilemma we have. Do we treat people the way they should have treated us, or do we treat people the way they did treat us? I mean, Adam Schiff afforded no due process to Donald Trump. So how much due process are House Democrats entitled to as you go through this inquiry? Well, I think they're, everyone's entitled to due process. You said it perfectly, Trey. I mean, the way they treated the, the former president is ridiculous. Remember, Joe Biden said uh, anyone who defied a congressional subpoena should be held accountable. They should be locked up. Well, his son defied a congressional subpoena this week with his encouragement. I mean, the, the amount of hypocrisy that the Democrats are exhibiting in this investigation, especially considering all the investigations they've launched against the former president and other Republicans, it's pretty breathtaking. But I think the bottom line is this. The American people are sick and tired of public corruption. They're sick and tired of the Menendezes and the Bidens of the world getting rich off the backs of the American taxpayers. And they want the truth and they want bad actors to be held accountable. And that's the purpose of this investigation. Chairman James Comer, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you soon, Chairman. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.